Good afternoon, this is Professor Shannon Gracie back again. We're on section 4.4 .4 of Pre-Calculus Enhanced with Graphing Utilities by Sullivan and Sullivan, and today we'll be covering properties of rational functions. So let's go ahead and warm it on up by um, graphing this library function, f at x is 1 over x and finding the domain in range. So go ahead and get started and see how you do. Okay, let's see how you did. So if this is x and f at x, I'll just go plus or minus 5. So if we uh, if we plug in, can, sorry, those are my dogs going nuts. If we plug in um, x is zero, do you see that is undefined? So part of what we're going to be doing today is learning about vertical asymptotes, which is what this graph has. Um, so let's go ahead and make the picture of this graph. When x is 1, the function will be 1. When x is 2, the function is, will be 1 over 2. And when x is 1 half, f at 1 half, you'd have 1 divided by a half, which is good, too. So at 1 half, we'll be at up at 2. And then it just kind of follows along like this, and it's going to get smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero, but it won't touch. And then on the other side, this graph is odd, so you'll have, you'll have, it'll reflect about the origin. So you'll get these ordered pairs here. Oops. And the graph will look something like this. Okay, so what is the domain of this of this function? What did you guys get for that? Good. Basically, if you did it in set notation, you would get x such that x is not equal to 0. Now, you're going to need to know interval notation. So in interval notation, it would be everything but 0, right? So the way we write this is minus infinity to 0, union 0 infinity. And we have parentheses around the 0 to show it's not included. Okay, so what about the range? What about the range? Good, you'll get the same thing. Basically, y covers every value except for 0. So for the range, we will get the same results, but it's going up, on that, up and down that vertical axis. Or the, all the possible values for y. Okay. So rational functions. A rational function is a function of the form capital R at x is equal to P at x divided by Q at x, where P and Q are polynomial functions and Q is not the zero polynomial because that would zero out the denominator. The domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers except those for which the denominator q is zero. Okay, so let's find the domain of these guys. Here with the denominator, remember we don't want the denominator to be zero. So, isolating x, we get that x cannot be equal to negative 3 for the first one. 
So the domain will be in set notation x such that x is not equal to negative 3. And in interval notation, we will get that the domain is good, minus infinity to minus 3 union, minus 3 to infinity. So everything but 3. Those parentheses mean that we're not including x as negative 3. So here we go, capital F and x. We can rewrite this guy in factored form. So let's see what we, what we get when we do that. So I'm just going to use trial and error. We need to get a 3x squared, and we need to have 5x as our middle term. So I think if we do that, we'll get what we're looking for. That gives us a product of negative 2, and that gives us a middle term of positive 5. So here we go. In this case, 3x minus 1 can't be 0, or x plus 2 can't be 0. So isolating x, we get these results here. So this one, our domain and set notation would be x such that x is not equal to negative 2 and a third. And in interval notation, it would be minus infinity to minus 2 union minus 2 to 1 third. And then we would have one more interval of 1 third to infinity. And you're done. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about graphing rational functions using transformations. So here we have r at x equals 1 over quantity x minus 1 plus 1. So what we're going to do is if we graph the first one as y1 equals 1 over x, and then I think we'll do the same scale as we did on the warm-up problem. And then what do you think y2 would be? Great, y2 would be 1 over x minus 1. So we'd take care of the horizontal phase shift. Of, we'd be going 1 to the right. And lastly, we would have our r of x, which is 1 over x minus 1, and then increase by 1. Okay, so we just did that first one. So remember, in this case, we had that vertical asymptote at x is 0, and then we had ordered pairs at these spots here. And then reflects across the origin. Oh, this, this point I made too close. This should be 1, 2, a half. All righty. So here's our, our first graph. Now we've got to do the same graph, but we got to shift it over by 1 to the right. So now instead of the vertical asymptote being at x equal to 0, it will be at x equal to 1. And then we'll have 
these ordered pairs here. So it'll be the same shape except it's shifted over by one to the right. Good so far? Awesome. Okay, now the final final graph. So we took care of that phase shift to the right by one. Now we've got to do a vertical translation up by one. So we'll have an ordered pair here because we had one at 2, 1. Now it'll be at 2, 3. And then this point will be, let's see, this was at over here. So this will be here. And then we'll have one here. So now, before, we had a horizontal asymptote going across at the line y is zero. But now we'll have our horizontal asymptote at y equal to one. And this is part of what we're going to learn today. So you're going to get real close, but we're not going to approach that horizontal. We're not going to cross the horizontal asymptote. And here we are. And you're all set. Okay? Good job. All right. So now this one, you know, it's, it's a wee bit challenging, but you can handle it. So... Here we go. I think uh, we'll use just a, a scale of plus or minus 10 on these. And um, we want to work with this graph a little bit before we decide what our graphs are going to be. Okay. So here we go. Let's factor the denominator. Do you guys see that this is a perfect square trinomial? So you would, it factors as x minus 3, the quantity squared. So if we had our very first graph, y1, be 1 over x squared, that's going to give us a basis for the rest of the other um, things that are going on there. We've got a horizontal phase shift of 3 to the right, and then we're going to have a reflection and a vertical stretch um, with that negative 2 multiplier to the function. So, all right, let's do it. So again, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at x is 0 initially, all right, and um, Let's see what happens, uh, you know, to these values. So when, when x is 1, you'll be at 1. When x is a half, do you see you'll be at, so you'll be at 1, half, one over 1 half squared, which is going to bump you up all the way to 4. And then when x is 2, you'll be at a quarter. So do you see it's going to, much more quickly, it's going to hug that axis and it and it gets really close and increases really quickly to that second axis. Okay? And then this is an even function. So we will um it'll reflect across the y axis. So we'll have
this going on. So that's our, our in initial graph. Okay, so far? Okay, so next up, we're going to, you got it, we're going to shift it three to the right. So we're going to graph one over x minus three, the quantity squared. So now this, this vertical asymptote is going to be one, two, three to the right. And we'll have these ordered pairs. And we have symmetry. Okay, so that is our second one, and let's go ahead and draw out our, our function. So actually this time it's capital G at x is equal to 1, negative 2 times quantity x minus 3 squared. So we still are going to have this vertical asymptote here. And we do have the GC, we ended up again with a horizontal asymptote at the line y is 0. Um, but I don't want to dash that in right now. I don't want to uh, interfere with our picture. So now we had an ordered pair up here. So we gotta, we've got to flip it and then stretch it by a factor of 2. And then this one here at one at one you know this this ordered pair right here at the uh, a half a unit away from the vertical asymptote is going to be all the way at negative eight oops so ordered pair here and here. I have an ordered pair here. This will be a little bit more up. And this will be our graph. Okay, so you did it. You graphed the um, you graphed two different rational functions using transformations. So now we get into horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So let R denote a function. So if as x approaches negative infinity, or as x approaches positive infinity. The values of r of x approach some fixed number l, so a constant. Then the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of r. Now if x approaches some number c, if as x approaches some number c, the values, the absolute value of r at x approaches infinity, then the line x equal to c is a vertical asymptote. The graph of r never intersects a vertical asymptote. It can dance around a horizontal asymptote, but not a vertical asymptote. Okay, so as you see from the graphs we did here, the very first graph, x equals 0, was our vertical asymptote, and then it shifted over to x is 3. And with this guy, again, do you see it's true that as, you, as x approaches 0 from the left side, 
from the left side, you're going to minus infinity. As x approaches 0 from the right side, you're going to positive infinity. So this here is a vertical asymptote. All right? OK, so let's just take a look at some pictures of graphs that can happen. So this one here, this is like the line y equals l. And you see our function is, is this is a horizontal asymptote. So both of these guys represent horizontal asymptotes. And like I was saying, you see how this one sort of dances around right here? That's OK, but at the end behavior, you, you approach this, this finite value L. Now vertical asymptotes here, right? Again, you can have a situation where they're both going up to infinity, or they might be going, one's, one's decreasing without bound, like the right side here, and one is increasing without bound. So this guy here, this guy here, do you see, is decreasing without bound, increasing without bound. When that behavior happens, you've got a vertical asymptote, and here they're both increasing without bound. So on this one, this is the line x equals c, x equals c, and these are vertical asymptotes. OK, so locating vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur when a simplified rational function has, when the denominator of a simplified ra rational function um, is equal to zero. So it's th at those x values where it happens. So if you've got this in lowest terms, there, the function r will have a vertical asymptote at x equal to c if r is a real zero of the denominator q. OK, so let's take a look at these guys here. Find the vertical asymptotes, if any, of the graph of these rational functions. So with the first one, it is simplified. Remember, there's no factoring formula for the sum of two squares. So what we would do is we would set the numerator equal to 0. And do you see this is going to be imaginary? And so thus, we will not have any vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur at real zeros. OK, let's look at this guy, q of x. q of x factors as x over x plus 4 times x plus 8. So we would set x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve. And then we would set x plus 8 equal to 0 and solve. And what we found is the vertical asymptotes occur at x equals negative 4 and at x equal to negative 8. So make sure you write them as vertical lines. Don't just say like negative 4 and negative 8 because that wouldn't be a vertical line. OK, so let's take a look at part C. Do you guys see that this one factors as x plus 10, 
actually, you know what, let me rewrite it down here. G of x factors as x plus 10 divided by quantity x plus 10 times quantity x minus 10. It's a difference of two squares. So the x plus 10s divide out to be 1. So you could rewrite g of x as 1 over x minus 10, but you still have to keep um, you still have to keep that original 0 where x plus 10 would have been equal to 0, so x would have been negative 10. That is excluded from the domain. You have to write that in. So this is kind of a cool graph because it's going to end up being a graph that has a hole in it at x equal to negative 10, and it has a vertical asymptote where? when x minus 10 is 0, or when x is equal to positive 10. So vertical asymptote occurs at x equal to 10. And just for your knowledge, um, there, there is a hole in the graph. When x is negative 10. Okay, so now we get into horizontal and oblique asymptotes. To find horizontal and oblique asymptotes, we need to check out the end behavior of the function. So if a rational function r of x is proper, meaning that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then as x approaches negative infinity, or as x approaches infinity, the value of f at x, my apologies, r at x is what we're working with, approaches 0. So it follows that the line y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote of the graph. Now, if a rational function is improper, meaning that the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, we write the rational function as the sum of a polynomial function f at x plus a proper rational function remainder at x over q at x using long division. So that is capital R at x was originally equal to p at x, the dividend, divided by q at x. And what you can get from that when you divide is some function, call it f at x, plus the remainder at x divided by your original divisor, q at x. Okay, so f at x is a polynomial, and r at x over q at x is a proper rational function. So since r at x over q at x is proper, then r at x over q at x will approach 0 as x approaches negative infinity or as x approaches infinity. So as a result, remember, thinking of the end behavior, capital R at x, which is equal to p at x over q at x, will approach this polynomial f at x as x approaches negative infinity or as x approaches infinity. So we have three possibilities. So if you end up getting f at x is equal to b, a constant, then the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of r. If f at x is equal to 
AX plus B, where A is not equal to zero, then the line Y equals AX plus B is called an oblique asymptote of the graph of R. In all other cases, the graph of R approaches the graph of F, and there are no horizontal or oblique asymptotes. So just a, a couple of examples. You've seen a couple of examples of horizontal asymptotes already. So here, if you had something like this, Oh, that doesn't look very horizontal, does it? So this would be um, where y was equal to some constant b. So, and this would be, you know, x and r at x. And r at x might look something like... I don't know, how do we want R at X to look? We can go something like this. And then an oblique asymptote a graph might look something like this. So you may have So this would be y equal to ax plus b. And your, your graph of r might be something like this. Alrighty. So now example four. We want to find the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes, if any, of each rational function. So remember that um, you'll either have, a, you know, if you have a horizontal asymptote, you will not have an oblique asymptote. If you have an oblique asymptote, you won't have a horizontal asymptote. Um, so you kind of use the same techniques to test on, on those two. So uh, let's just start with vertical asymptotes. So for this one, looking for the vertical asymptotes. So here it's in reduced form. So 6x plus 1, we set it equal to 0. So 6x would be negative 1, and x would be negative 1, 6. So your vertical asymptote is at x is negative 1, 6. We'll put our conclusion at the end. Secondly, we're going to check for horizontal slash oblique. Uh, oblique asymptotes, by the way, are sometimes called slant asymptotes. So for this one, we need to divide. And I looked at the degree, and the degree of the numerator, the polynomial in the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 1. So I, that's how I knew we would get an, a horizontal or oblique asymptote. So we're going to divide 7x minus 8 by 6x plus 1. So here I need to get a 7 coefficient. So if I multiply by 7, 6, we'll get 7x plus 7, 6. Subtracting, that will be, uh, let's see, that would be if you get a common denominator, or you could do it on your calculator, that would be four, negative 48 minus 7 over 6. So 48 minus 7, that would give us negative 55 over 6 as our remainder. So we've rewritten r at x 
which was originally equal to 7x minus 8 over 6x plus 1. And that is equal to 7, 6, and then minus, I'll just write it here, 55, 6 divided by 6x plus 1. So this one, this part here, this part here approaches 0 as x approaches negative infinity or as x approaches infinity. So our f of x is equal to 7, 6, which is a constant. So that means we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 7, 6. So let's write our conclusion. I'll just squeeze it in right here. There is a vertical. asymptote at x equals negative 1, 6 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 7, 6. And these are really helpful for graphing if you know where your asymptotes are. Okay, so next up, we have this function here. So for this one, we want to make sure we have it in reduced form for the vertical asymptote portion. So this is x cubed plus 4 divided by this factors as, let's see, I think if we do, we need to get a 6. So if we have three x or 3 and 2 like that. And then let's figure out what signs. Oh, actually, on this one, do you see? It's not going to work out. This factoring won't, it doesn't factor. Um, if you just kind of do your x really quick, overall product of positive 12, um, there's nothing that has a product of positive 12 and adds up to negative 1, which means that for the vertical asymptote, we'll just use the quadratic formula. So 0 equal to 2x squared minus x plus 6. We would get x is equal to the opposite of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 6 all over 2 times 2. But what do you notice about this guy? Do you see you're going to get a negative under the radical? You'll get 1 minus 48, which is negative 47. So we know that there's no real solutions. So we know that there are no vertical asymptotes. So finding the, finding the um, I believe we'll have an oblique asymptote this time because this degree is greater. So we're going to be dividing. So the second part is uh, finding the horizontal or oblique. asymptote. So dividing, we would have 2x squared minus x 
plus 6 into, be careful, it's x cubed plus 0, x squared plus 0, x plus 4. So, you know, they're, they're kind of mean, the coefficients, but that's okay, we can do it. So in order to get a coefficient of 1, I have to multiply by 1 half, and I need an x cubed, so I multiply by x. So that's going to give me x cubed minus 1 half x squared, and then plus 3x. So I'll be subtracting all of this to get my new dividend. So the sign will flip on this guy and this guy, and we'll be bringing down the plus 4. So what I need to match 1 half is going to be a quarter, because 2 times a quarter is a half. And I've already got the power I need on the x. So multiplying through, we'll have 1 half x squared minus 1 fourth x plus 6 fourths is the same as 3 halves. So subtracting this guy, my remainder is going to be, so let's see, 3 is the same as 12 fourths. So negative 12 fourths plus 1 fourth is negative 11 fourths times x. And then 8 halves minus 3 halves is plus 5 halves. So we will have, what, what did we find out? We found out that capital F at x equal to x cubed plus 4 over 2x squared minus x plus 6 is equivalent to capital F at x equal to 1 half x plus 1 fourth plus negative 11 fourths x plus 5 halves all over 2x squared minus x plus 6. So again, this here, do you see that the degree of the numerator is 1, degree of the denominator is 2. So this, this guy, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, this guy approaches approaches oh I can do my arrow this guy approaches as as x approaches plus or minus infinity the remainder in x which is this right here approaches 0 So, what does that mean? That means that we'll have an oblique asymptote, right, at y equals 1 half x plus 1 fourth. So, let's just write our little conclusion. No vertical asymptotes. Asymptotes. Um, there's an oblique asymptote at y equals one half x plus four. I'm sorry, one moment. It's one fourth, not four. My bad. I lost my one over. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at this guy. Um, so the first part, right, this is equivalent to 4x over 3x plus 11 times 3x minus 11. So, for the vertical asymptote, 
We're going to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve. So 3x plus 11 is 0 would give us 3x equals negative 11, which gives us x is negative 11 thirds. And 3x minus 11 equal to 0 gives us 3x equals positive 11, and x is positive 11 thirds. So that's going to be where our vertical asymptotes are located. Now secondly, if you look at the original problem, do you see that the degree of the numerator is 1 and the degree of the denominator is 2? So therefore, we know that we'll have a horizontal asymptote at y is 0. So is the horizontal asymptote. So our conclusion is the vertical asymptotes are x equals negative 11 thirds and x equals 11 thirds. There is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right, so we're done for today. So next time we'll be covering the graph of a rational function. So that'll be some fun stuff going on. <laughs> All right, have a fabulous day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.